It's a pattern that has many Chicago area transgender and nonconforming people looking for answers. Since the American Medical Association branded it an epidemic of violence, the killings of transgender women, particularly those of color, continue at a concerning rate. What's fueling the increase? And the I team tonight with new accusations of discrimination by Chicago authorities. January 17, 2021, the body of Sherry Nicholas is found in her room at the Jackson Park Supportive Living Facility on Chicago's South Side. Jerry Nicholas claiming Chicago police did not take his transgender daughter's death seriously from the beginning because of who she was. This is a, a parent natural causes. Well, we don't know. Nicholas telling the I team authorities misgendered her, and he says there is evidence of foul play that was ignored. In an email to Nicholas, CPD declaring a thorough investigation found no evidence of murder and the case closed. The autopsy finding cause of death is undetermined. But a mysterious note allegedly written to the Nicholas family urging news involvement fuels this father's speculation. She's going to be missed forever. Right on back. <laughs> An I team analysis of the latest numbers from 2020 to right now tracks eight trans homicides in Chicago, with even more cases suspected of going unreported. All victims are women of color. We're seeing geographic concentration in certain states and certain cities. Um, Chicago being one of the cities in our database with the most uh, transgender homicides. In 2022, the Chicago area reeling from three deaths. Martasia Richmond is found stabbed to death on a porch in July. Daniel Burley, described as her partner, is charged with murder. Lawyers say he acted in self-defense. In March, Tatiana LaBelle's remains are discovered stuffed in the trash on the city's east side. No arrests yet. And a day later in Evanston, transgender activist Elise Mallory's body is discovered in Lake Michigan. Her death now listed as drowning, but the medical examiner's office is unable to rule if it was accidental or murder. The clearance rates in our data are far below the national average for non-transgender homicide rates. And the clearance rates in Chicago are much lower. Florida State University is compiling a database to keep tally on cases and the outcomes. Definitely shows that um, there's a, a pattern of neglect. National and local activists calling for police to stop misgendering victims and to take the crimes more seriously, including classifying the homicides as transgender. That is definitely something that is important so communities know where the disparities lie. For more than a week, Chicago police officials told the I team they wanted to do an interview for this report, but never provided anyone to speak on camera. Transgender activists are more forthcoming. Most, if not all the time, trans people are murdered by the, someone that they care for or someone that they're doing um, uh, survival sex work with. And we don't normally talk about that. Four of the eight Chicago cases have resulted in charges, including the murder of Courtney Ashe Key, shot to death here on Chicago's South Side in 2020. 62 year old William Truss accused of killing Key after allegedly soliciting her for sex. Truss will be pleading not guilty, according to his attorney, who says he's innocent. She left her footprint on your soul, on your heart. Key's support network telling the I team the arrest is progress, but that more is needed. This is a kickstart point for, for, for everybody, for real, for real. This is a, like I said, it's a victory. So we, we won up right now. Jerry Nicholas with his own small victory. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability, COPA, tonight referring Nicholas's complaint to the newly launched mediation pilot program. They can correct us and show the LGBT community that they care about them also. That's what I want. A spokesperson for the supportive living facility telling the I team they fully cooperated with CPD's investigation. Community activists telling the I team that trans and nonconforming deaths could decrease if there was more social acceptance and economic opportunities. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.